Let me explain why the CGI in She-Hulk looks really bad. And no, it's not because of a TV show having a lower budget compared to a feature film. I mean, the same Hulk looks really good in this show. So, a lot of people are asking me about the CGI quality in She-Hulk. And because honestly, it kind of looks like it was rendered on a PlayStation 4, which is especially bad considering that they also made Thanos, which looks really good for two Avenger movies. Now here's the thing, a lot of people say that She-Hulk looks really bad because it has a TV budget, but that's not the case. I mean, 15 to 25 million dollar per episode is still a lot of money, but the real reason is that this is an artistic and technological limitation. That means you just can't throw a lot of money to the show to make it look good. What we've seen here is actually a limitation of our contemporary art and technology in 3D animation. And to show you why that is, let me take you through a quick journey through a short history of making 3D realistic humans, or humanoid character. And in the end of this video, I'll show you how we can achieve a hyper-realistic good-looking She-Hulk. And we're going to start with my waifu, Dr. Aki Ross. As you can tell, I like girls with brains. While in some shots she really looks outdated by today's standards, at the time, this was the state of the art, the most realistic we can do in making a 3D human character. And in a lot of shots, the 3D quality do stand up to the test of time. But to many of you, she will still look really fake, and I'll explain why that is in a bit. For now, let's compare to the latest and greatest in 3D human technology. That is Grand Moff Tarkin from Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Compared to Aki Ross, Tarkin here has subsurface scattering among other advancements in rendering technologies such as ray tracing. That's why a lot of shots back then with Aki Ross looks really fake because they just didn't have RTX on. But even though Tarkin's equipped with the latest technology in 3D computer graphics, as soon as he starts moving, his movement is kind of rigid and his lips look kind of rubbery, especially when he moves his head. It feels like there's something weighing down his head because there is. There's a camera attached to his face. And that's a lot of weight in the back of the head. Well, this is because despite the advancements in motion capture technology, especially in performance capture, underneath all that, he's just still a set of polygons being moved around by virtual bones. The same technology that they use for Dr. Aki Ross here. And we can see the same limitation in She-Hulk, where her movement still looks kind of rigid. Again, this is the limitation of the underlying technology and the skill of the animator. So how come Thanos looks really good, even if he's still just a set of polygons being driven by virtual bones? While the skin texture technology really do help to sell his character on the big screen, the main reason why he looks really good is because Thanos doesn't really look like a human being. And I don't mean just by the color of his skin, but his cheese grater chin really do help sell the effect. While they really did design his face based on cable, this alien-like feature just alienates our brain enough to tell that this guy is neither humanoid nor human. It helped him far enough that the guy just doesn't fall into the uncanny valley effect because he doesn't look like a human being. But that's not the whole story. Because no ball chinian is going to help the Hulk. The big guy is basically just a really tall muscular green human. So he needs to look really good in order to not fall into that uncanny valley effect. Especially since his skin is green. How did they do that? In terms of 3D models, what they did was really clever. Now, what makes a lot of 3D model looks like a doll or fake is that they just have really smooth skins just like a Barbie doll. So for Dr. Aki Ross to not look like a living doll, what they did was they added a lot of textures on her skin. Compare Dr. Ross with a Barbie from Toy Story. She's got a lot of skin complexities. And this is why if you look at her on a tiny screen, such as your smartphone, even her highest quality render would look really fake. And in terms of skin texturing, they really went overboard with Dr. Sid. And as you can see in this side by side, Sid looks a lot more realistic than Dr. Aki Ross. Keep in mind that this is from the same movie, which means this is the same level of computer graphics technology. And that's what they did with the Hulk. Compare the current iteration of Hulk with the original Ang Lee Hulk, which is a seriously underrated film. As you can see, that Hulk look a lot more like a doll instead of a real living, breathing human being of a Hulk. His skin color is a lot more saturated. His face is a lot cleaner. Pretty much no stubble there. Compare that to Mark Ruffalo's version of the Hulk. His skin is a lot more muted in color and he's got a lot of facial hair. So adding a lot of dirt and grunge and wear and tear is one way they can make something look really realistic. And this is the reason why Grand Moff Tarkin looks pretty realistic when he's not moving here. But as soon as he becomes animated, our brain, which is really good at identifying humans, 
immediately identifies that this is supposed to be human, but it's not. And the uncanny valley works against him, and because of that, he really looks like a fake character. But the younger Princess Leia, with a very smooth skin and a lot of makeup, really looks like he's a 3D character doll. But still, that's a really good looking doll. Now, here's the problem. Going back to the She-Hulk, adding stubbles and aging is not something that you can do with this character because just like Princess Leia, she really needs to have a really young skin with very few complexion. And this is her character by design. And it's this design parameter that's really stretching the ability of 3D computer graphics beyond what is technologically and artistically capable of. But there is actually another different technology that they can use that will deliver a hyper-realistic human in the shape of this character. Now, unlike the Hulk, which is a big hulking guy, the size and shape of She-Hulk's body is actually still within the limitations of what's humanly possible. For starters, She-Hulk is only 2 meters tall. There are a lot of women out there who are actually this size, or even taller. For example, this Russian girl is 206 centimeters tall, or this 15-year-old Chinese girl who is actually 226 centimeters tall. In comparison, that's about 15 centimeters taller than the current actor who played Chewbacca. That's right, they could have just went with the way they did The Incredible Hulk in the 1978 TV series with Lou Ferrino, but this time, augmented with the same technology they used to bring back young Luke Skywalker in the Book of Boba Fett. That's right. All they need to do is just deepfake Tatiana Maslany's face onto the face of a girl who is 2 meters tall and painted green. And this is a proven technology. They did this for Luke Skywalker in the Book of Boba Fett and look how handsome he is. Technology is here, we just need to pick the right one and this is why you shouldn't always default to 3D computer graphics. At the end of the day, CGI quality is just a filmmaking tool. Toy Story, a movie released in 1995 with extremely outdated graphic quality that looks like it was rendered on a PlayStation 2, is still today a really enjoyable movie because it has a great story to tell. And I, for one, welcome our new Green Giant Overlord.